Hey there guys, I'm Lee Williamson and I'm from Elemental Concept. Today we're going to learn how to use the post morph tag to animate between two splines in Cinema 4D. Without further ado, let's dig in. Right, so I wanted to animate this M spline into this table, tennis table and I found the easiest solution was to use something called a pose morph tag. Um, let's show you how it works. So the first thing I had to do is um, the the object that's got more points would be the table tennis table. So I think I'm going to work with the table tennis table. So take the table, you go into your tags. And let's find the pose morph tag. So it's under character tags and there's something called pose morph tag. Now we're going to be animating the points on the spline. Um, usually you could animate um, uh, spline points with this point level animation. But the problem is you don't uh, get the ability to edit your curves with uh, the pose morph tag you can. So let's show you how it works. So we check points because we're going to be animating points and I'm going to double click this new pose and I'll call this M because we want to make it animate into a um, M. Now it's already on edit. So I'm going to go into my side view and I'm going to turn that M on. What I'll also do is I'm just going to put a protection tag on the M just so that if I'm moving the table points around that I don't mess it up. So I'll go and choose my points and let's see. So let's move those. Let's move all of this. Let's find an easy way to do this. I'll use my lasso selection and I'll select all these points. Press T on my keyboard scale them all down so it flattens them out and move that all the way to the top then i'm going to use my lasso tool once again on this side press t on my keyboard and flatten that out over there actually no you know what i won't do that let me first move that all to there and I can use my lasso tool again and move that there. Uh, then you see these three points over here. So we can take one point. Let's see what's the best way to do this. Let me zoom in. And I can select this point and this point. Press T on my keyboard and scale this out. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's scale this out until it gets to the corners of the M. Then I can take, um, let's go back to that lasso tool, select that bottom bit, bring that down there. I can select Three, three points there. Press T on the keyboard. Oh, maybe not that. Let's try these two points over there. And I can move them over there. And then just to make sure that they're all lined up, I can select them all again. Press T on the keyboard and scale them to zero over there. And I can do the same thing for this side. Select all these points. Press T on my keyboard scale them all to zero and press space on my keyboard and move it down to there. Uh, same thing with this middle point. I can bring that down there and select this point and select this point. Hold down shift on the keyboard so you have them both selected. Move them up, press T on the keyboard, scale them in. And then these last two points over here Press T on my keyboard and scale them in. Right, so there I have my M now. So I'm going to go back into my uh, perspective view. 
And now what I've done is I've actually recorded that table, tennis table going from an M um, to a table tennis table. Now, if I click over here, press animate, uh, I can now animate that strength with the slider. So let's animate it. So I go onto my, uh, let's say keyframe 10 and I drop a keyframe and then I go to keyframe say 30 and I drop another keyframe. And what I do is on that keyframe, I pull it down to its uh, table, to the table tennis. So now when I press space on the keyboard, it animates out. Let me turn that M off because we don't need that as a guide anymore. There it's animating on. And now the next thing to do is if you right click on that radio button and go to um, show F curve. Currently you've just got your standard easy ease curve. Now it would be nice to have a bit of uh, anticipation of follow um, and overshoot. So what I could do is I could select this keyframe and make it go higher. So what, if you notice what it's actually doing is it's animating over, uh, it's overshooting at uh, its shape. And then the same thing you can do there is if you pull your curve in over here, you can also have it push further than the, um, said the, the shape it is designated to be. So what it essentially does is it kind of changes it to that new shape uh, of a table tennis table and then pushes even further past of it. So now you've noticed in the middle, it's going a little bit too far. So maybe my curve is a little bit too extreme. All right, that's how that works. Boing, perfect. Now the next thing I wanna do is just whack this inside and uh, extrude object. So I can do that. Where are you? There we go, extrude. And now all I need to do is give it a little bit more depth, let's say 200. And here we go. We have our animated M to a table. Boom. Now for whatever strange reason, that seems to be disappearing on the first keyframe. I wonder why that is. Have I missed something? Right, so I figured out the solution. Um, the problem I had was I hadn't lined up all my points. Silly me. So that's why the extrude um, objects didn't work. So let's show you what I did. So I click on the post morph tag, I uncheck use and then I select those points where they are not, they're supposed to be showing the same position. And let's find out where else there was any of those little kinks. So there is another one, there's T on my keyboard. Uh, let's just scale that down to zero. And I think that's sorted. So click on my post morph tag, click back to use. Let's click back to full view um, and see if it works. Let's click on animate. Boom. And now it works perfectly. Right, I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Thank you. Bye.